everybody, Beyondrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode of Eco Trails Wildlife Sanctuary. So today we're going to have a two-part episode with the first half being kind of a build slash a tutorial video on kind of my building process. We're going to slow it way, way down. And actually kind of have you uh, either build along or just kind of watch along as I uh, slowly go through uh, building a habitat and everything like that. So, and then the episode, or the next half of the episode, excuse me, is going to be um, a little bit of management and looking over the zoos, uh, primarily at our, uh, let's say like probably our security and uh, other aspects um, like that, because that is kind of uh, getting away from us in the zoo. So yeah, uh, sit back, relax. We're going to have, uh, like I said, a nice big two-part episode today. And yeah, let's not waste any time. We're going to go ahead and jump into the uh, first half, which is going to be uh, coming in and redoing our Asian water monitor uh, habitat. So I've been talking about this a uh, for a few episodes now, but especially last episode um, of our franchise zoo here, this uh, kind of spilled over where they had the uh, offspring and now the habitat is a little bit uh, too small for them. So let's go ahead and take a look here. If we go over to their habitat gate and look at the uh, terrain, I believe it is. Uh, oh no, you know, I'm doing that all wrong. Let's click on them rather and then go on the terrain here. Yes, we can see that uh, they don't have enough uh, water swimming area by not that far off um, and then same thing with the navigate on uh, the uh, land area as well same thing really not that too far off but far enough off uh, that their social is very far down now with the uh, the new um, offspring and everything like that so uh, yeah so I figured again today let's go ahead and I'm gonna delete all of this because we need to um, upgrade our and, and expand our, our habitat here so I figured that we would go ahead and delete all of this instead of doing a minor change we will start absolutely fresh just fresh brand new and bring you all in because uh, I'm starting to see a lot of comments uh, between different platforms like uh, YouTube comments reddit uh, you name it just uh, people starting to just ask you know how do I and other builders kind of uh, come to build stuff uh, like this because a lot of people are saying their builds are looking very square just very um, not natural just uh, not how they want it to be basically and they're just not quite sure how to uh, break out of the uh, design bubble so I um, figured yeah like I said we will go ahead and slow it way way down start fresh with a new habitat here not too big of a habitat so it shouldn't take up too too much time but um, yeah let's go ahead and start fresh let me uh, let me what do they, what do they call it snap do the blink real quick and we'll uh, we'll get rid of this all right and boom there you go big empty field to work with so the only thing that i kept from the entire destruction there uh was this little fence here i i like what this uh i like this fence style and everything so we may or may not use that but yeah other than that uh we just kind of have this backdrop to uh go off of but yeah other than that we are good to uh build so first thing i want to do is we're actually going to uh, go up into the zoopedia um and we're going to check out uh kind of what we're working with here what are the boundaries Boundaries, how big do we need things to be? Um, actually, first things first things first. Let's go to our animal storage. We have uh, one, two parents here, then three uh, male siblings. Perfect. Uh, so there you go. So we have five all together with the uh, two adults, three juveniles. Let's go back to the Zoopedia. Um, we have our, yep, we have, we go have the Asian water monitor. So let's go ahead and plug that in, right? So right here we have the two adults. Three juveniles, so we'll need a space of 355, 138, grade two fence that is at least 3.3 feet tall. Um, not a problem there. No big deal. Uh, and then the other thing we need to look at is what happens when these babies grow. Okay, so they are solitary all the way through. So all mature offspring become outsiders. So that is something else to uh, consider when we're building our habitat. Um, I do plan on having... Um, this being a breeding pair so they will constantly kind of need a bigger habitat so um, if you are thinking like oh well you're gonna get rid of the uh, infants anyways well we are yes because especially if we go back to our animal trading these are all gold look at that nice so in a few uh, uh hopefully by today's episode if you need some asian water monitors we'll have uh, three boys on there or three gold ones there <laughs> um so those will all be on the market but yeah once they're gone um these two will have ample amount of space but if they have a uh, or once they have another um litter and everything they'll have enough room um overall so again what was those numbers what were those numbers that we're looking at we are looking for uh the was it 355 355 by 138 water uh we don't have to worry about deep water 
and we don't have to worry about climbing. So there we go. All right, so now we have kind of in our heads how big the area needs to be. Before, it was roughly around this size and what we needed less than 100 meters more um, navigable, navigatable area and the water was only like 30 meters away from it. So both of them extremely close. Uh, but let's go ahead and kind of map out where we want our um, our habitat to be and we're actually gonna map it out with the flatten the foundation We're gonna flatten everything out. Don't worry about this giant hole. We'll get to that in later episodes <laughs> That giant hole is a little bit why we're having this uh, Little bit of I don't want to call it a filler episode But it's kind of an in-betweener episode in between a ginormous way too big idea and um, Other ideas basically so uh, yeah, this is kind of um, an in-betweener episode for that So anyways, yeah, we have our space that we want to fill in let's go ahead and we're gonna take our uh, barriers and I always almost always start with null no matter what even if I have intentions of using other um, materials and forms of barriers I almost always start with null and I did like the original idea of having the barriers start in this rock wall um, over here so let's go ahead and we will tuck this into the rock just a little bit so this has now become a, a wall for us, right? So um, if you're not too familiar with the null barriers, the animals recognize them as that, or yeah, they recognize that as the edge of the uh, barrier essentially. But if we hide the barrier behind these rocks or a uh, in-game wall piece, anything like that, the animals will uh, not be able to go through it. Um, so that will actually save you some money in franchise mode if you don't want to spend money on repairing concrete walls and you know all the other material walls that need a mechanic to build them. Uh, if you use the null uh, barriers here, you can hide them, like I said, behind the rocks and the in-game walls. And I'm almost positive that all of them don't degrade like the um, the barriers do. So I can kind of go with the same idea right now, just making it a little bit bigger uh, than before. So if you were familiar with this series, been keeping up with this franchise mode, you are going to recognize it is a similar layout, but we are just going a little bit bigger with it. And let's go ahead and we will turn it. We're not going to make a square here, but let's go ahead and start to turn. But let's make a little bit of a curve. I do have this on snapping, angle snap 15 degrees. I rarely use the curve section unless, again, it is for a material and I want it to kind of look like that. But for null, I use a lot of the uh, just kind of snapping to make a general curve. Because, again, we're just kind of generally mapping out where we want our uh, barrier to be. This isn't exactly where this is going to stay, right? This is This is just kind of a uh, playing with ideas and kind of mapping out in our head kind of maybe where we want things so like this right here made a little indent right there as of right now not entirely sure why um i really i didn't plan this ahead at all that's why you're gonna hear me go um hmm, huh. <laughs> a lot not sure how the editing is gonna go for this either depends how long this overall takes but um yeah why not we why don't we cut that in just a little bit right there uh you know we'll even do it a little bit more i'm kind of starting to like this little cut in idea and we will cut this in roughly right around about that much. And if you've noticed, I haven't um, extended or anything are the length of the null barriers. There we go. And we're going to complete it. Uh, those were all the exact same length and everything. Feel free to extend or um, anything like that that you need to. But I like to kind of keep it the same uh, length as I need be like right here we could have made one giant one but just kind of keeping it the same so yeah there we go let's uh let's quickly see how big this is and to do that let's quickly throw in um, our habitat entrance gate so the the small habitat gate over this way and I can even hook up to the pathway right there that's about where it hooked up last time I do like that uh, we'll click on it here go to our terrain tab and right here it's going to tell us that it is heckin big so what it's like over 700 uh, meters bigger than what we need it to be maybe a little less than that but that's going to go down uh, drastically once we start to put in uh, like water and all that other kind of stuff. So um, let's go ahead and we'll start to play with the terrain. Let's go and go back to our terrain tab here. And yeah, that is a big part of it, right, is the water uh, way. So I think kind of a cool thing is with this little indent right here. What do we have? We almost have like a, a kidney bean, right? A kidney bean looking uh, uh, layout right now. Um, let's have the water... Kind of be where this little nub is right back here and we'll extend in 
uh, like I said, edit this how we need to uh, as we're building here. But let's start there. We will make a little lake system over here. Now let, we're, let's make it deep enough where our Asian water monitors can swim and stuff like that. So we're going to dig down. We'll, we'll start there. We're just kind of guessing right now. Uh, we'll go to our water. I'm just going to kind of quickly fill this in. Let's see where we're at. So let's click on the water. There we go. And it's going to tell you right here, space. You know, 61 meters. Average depth is only 1.79. So like if I was just gauging that by my, my eyeballs there, I would have been like, oh, that's plenty deep. They'll, that's, but no, it's actually not. We need to go down. We must go deeper. There we go. And let's actually make this a little bit wider so we can see what the heck is going on. Fill this back up with water. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we will extend the water all the way up there. If you notice when you're placing water, you're going to get a lot of different levels, right? Um, sometimes, depending how big the water is, meaning the area that it's going to fill up, sometimes it'll take longer uh, for this to go. So if you don't see a blue valid right away and you kind of see sometimes a yellow, like uh, it, it says what it was right there. I can't read it. It goes too quick. But if it goes yellow and not obstructed, just let it sit there for a little bit and it'll hopefully think about it um, after a little bit and then you can kind of click and uh, fill in the space. But anyways, let's see. What, now, that, now we have 5.37. That's perfect. Uh, honestly, we can go up a little bit, but I'm not even going to touch it. That's fine. They will, I believe it's four meters or three meters. It's three or four meters. Uh, someone correct me down in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, around, uh, say four for safekeeping. <laughs> uh, but four meters, I believe, is where they uh, start to deep dive. Start to swim way, way down and everything like that. So let's go ahead and we'll make our, our lake area. Let's extend out our size just a little bit. Also, I should note for new viewers that are following along, uh, my UI over here, the interface might look a little bit different. I do have one mod installed. It's not a big deal of a mod, but uh, it is, I, I phrased that weird. Anyways, I do have <laughs> I do have one mod installed. It's called the free build mod. Uh, and it basically gives you um, a lot more intensity and it gives you huge uh, sizes for your uh, brushes and stuff like that. It does a heck of a lot more than that, um, but it will not affect uh, how we're building today. You can still follow along and build exactly how I'm building. I'm not going to try and uh, um, use the mod enhancements too, too much. So don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, let's go ahead and um, make our lake area. Um, we will redo our... Um, barrier as need be so i like how that's looking so again we're using our flat in the foundation we just made a general flat area and let's go ahead and kind of uh, clean this up just a little bit so you see the edges here kind of pushing and poking out so we'll reduce down the intensity and just just barely clicking just kind of click off click off click off so we're almost just like painting it a little bit so a lot of times you'll come in here and just you'll you're more wiggling and swooshing the mouse back and forth uh, to a certain extent. But yeah, just kind of cleaning up these edges just a little bit. We are going to overall um, cover up the majority of the edges of our lake here, or our pool, with rocks, but it is still good to have these kind of covered up. And then also I have kind of a weird situation going on here with our big old hole. Uh, let's extend this out for our pathway, right? So I think I had just a little bit. So let's turn up the intensity. We're back over to our flatten the foundation and we're going to just extend this out the ground that is just a little bit so that we don't run into pathing issues later on. The ground and the path, they love to work together. So whenever you can, uh, try and pre-do your, um, your terrain is what I'm trying to say. There you go. Make it all flat and all that kind of fun stuff. So, all right, there we go. Looking good there. Uh, let's click the general area where the there it is. There's the null barrier. We will take that. We're actually going to back it up a little bit, back it up over this way a little bit, and right click to delete. Delete again. And we're just going to follow this all the way around our habitat here. <music> There we go. And let's go back to our terrain brush. And let's have something going to this lake, right? Or like something feeding into this. Uh, so I think just from this rock structure in the back here, again, this is all just made with the in-game rocks. Um, let's have just like a little waterfall scene kind of going here. I think that'd be really fun to add some kinetic energy, some moving energy to our habitat as well, instead of just having lake which is good you know you, this is not it wouldn't be bad just to kind of go you know plop there's some water that's great uh but let's add on to it right let's keep going so we will go ahead and let's see yeah about right there 
and just have it kind of flow right into the side of this hill. So we're kind of, so we're gonna kind of play with it a little bit. Let's turn down the intensity, turn down the size as well. We'll go to like three or four, looks like three. And I want this to be a little bit smaller too, almost like a stream, right? Not a full on river or anything. It's not going that far. Um, it's just coming out of these little rocks, little trickling waterfall scene. There we go, it's right underneath there. And yeah, let's just make this a little bit smaller. So it's more of a scene, or a stream, excuse me. And very good, okay, let's go back to our water. Calculating, that's the thing I was trying to say earlier. It's gonna say yellow for calculating. Um, we'll bring it down to there, it says valid. Click, awesome, good stuff. Okay, so now we have kind of a general layout and area of where we, um, of our habitat. And you know what, it's a little bit, let's go back to this. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of land anymore. So let's actually take out this half of the lake area right here. Got a little bit too much lake area and uh, we'll just kind of pave this over. So turn the intensity back up, turn the size back up, flatten the foundation, start here and just kind of push this along the side there. So it's almost like a little beach area. We'll even take our pole and we'll pull some of the ground out from underneath there. Not completely necessary, but still makes me feel better. There we go. <laughs> um, great, we'll put our water back in. Hopefully it still works out. Looks like it does. And let's go double check now, uh, clicking on the habitat. We'll go back to that terrain tab before we get going too much further and see what we're really actually working with. So we're still well within what we need to be. Um, honestly, could maybe even kept that water there, but visually I didn't really want that much water either. Uh, so we have plenty of everything. This is a more than big enough uh, habitat for our water monitors. Um, again, for now, we're not done uh, encroaching onto the area um, that they're going to be uh, living in. So let's go ahead and start to do some nature. So first thing, I'm gonna go and do some rock work, lots of rock work. So as you can see, we're using the tropical rocks in this area. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go, go down to the tropical rocks set here. There we go. And we're gonna start to line our lake set here and even probably our um, habitat a little bit as well, kind of do a combo of each. So I like to use this Tropical Rock 7. A lot of the rocks that you see in the back here, those are just uh, Tropical Rock 7 stacked on top of each other uh, four or five times essentially to get that kind of look back there. So, um, and also I'm gonna turn off, if we go to our uh, little notepad here, I'm gonna turn off the Align to Surface. I use a lot of hotkeys, so that is V on the hotkey, so I'm gonna hit V to turn it off. And if you don't know what that does, align to surface is any surface that it comes up to, it's going to try and uh, match that exact surface. So that is really, really handy, but for now I'm gonna turn that off. And we're actually going to go along our um, shoreline here and hold shift. See, I'm holding shift here and start to line, just kind of line the shoreline. So I don't really want this lip either. I'm gonna hit X to bring up our advanced move, hit X again. And let's go ahead and hit spacebar, turn off snapping, and we're just gonna kind of line this up right there. There we go, very good stuff. I'm gonna hit M to move it, and Z a few times to spin it all the way around 180 degrees, and same thing, go back to advanced move, M, and let's line it up a little bit here. I wanna turn it, so I'm gonna hit X again, X again, turn it, X again, move it, boom, there you go. So now I'm gonna take these two rocks that we just placed, I'm gonna click one, hold shift, click the other one. So now it went automatically into making these a group and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's merge these two into one scenery group item. So now if we hit escape and click on these again, now we have one item when I click on this as these two rocks. We just made essentially one bigger rock, right? One longer rock. So I'm gonna hit control X. I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit, hit X again. And I'm actually gonna hit space bar this time. No, I'm, not. I'm actually gonna leave it freehand. And let's go ahead and flip this rock almost all the way 180 degrees. Doesn't matter if it's exactly straight or nice or anything, because we don't really want it to look exactly straight or nice. And there we go, we're just gonna kind of layer that on top of each other. So now we have four rocks in total, two groups, uh, just kind of layered on top of each other. We're gonna take it a step further. We're gonna click on that top rock that we just uh, placed. I'm gonna hold shift again, click that bottom one. Let's make this one group. And we're gonna hit control D or control D to uh, duplicate. 
I'm going to hit Z twice to spin it around. And let's line the other shoreline over here. There you go. It's looking pretty good so far, right? Not too shabby. So let's take this same group. We're going to hit Control D again. I'm going to hit X. X again. And I'm going to spin this all the way around. So now we're taking the same group of rocks, but it's a different group of rocks, right? It's the same, same, but different. <laughs> and if we even want to go a little bit further, let's spin it around one more time. So there you go. Now we're going to kind of, kind of uh, form this, morph this into the background rock area. There you go. Let's click that there. That looks pretty good, I think. We'll do this one more time. Z, kind of put this in the back there. All right. Good stuff. And we're going to go ahead and do this all the way around. Uh, the the area we can even speed this up just a little bit more if you want to make this one group We can take this and just kind of flip-flop from either side Because you don't want that's a lot of the I think that's where a lot of people get hung up is a lot of things start to look repetitious like just absolutely the same um, And this this can kind of help you know you take we've taken one rock we have we haven't used any other rock right now except for rock number seven and what we've made three or four different variations of it for our shoreline rocks and we're just kind of flip-flopping it back and forth we're spinning it different directions you know we're taking it and we're kind of moving it yeah just just kind of keep flipping it up and around and you kind of get all these different variations of the same rock taking it even further it's, it's all looking really smooth right now, which is good because we're by a, a lakefront. We're by a river. This is eventually going to be a waterfall, right? So moving water that goes against rocks and stuff, it's going to smooth it out over time. So that makes sense. Uh, but let's say you want to get a little bit more rugged with it. Uh, you can take the same group of rocks and let's go ahead and let's uh, toggle that. There we go. And let's just kind of turn it a little bit so that the edge of it is facing up. Take that same group of rocks. And you can kind of, uh, on the back of it here, just kind of play with it until it, you get the edge of it just kind of sticking up. And if you double this up and do the same method that we've been doing with, now we'll hit Z, X to bring it down and stuff. You kind of get these, again, ridge lines. These more jagged looking rocks, which is a good variation from the, the smooth rocks that we've been doing. There you go. Let's take it a step further. And we can actually take the top part of this, the vertical side. What if we just kind of bring it down like that as an extension of this mountainside here? That's looking okay. We can maybe improve that a little bit. It's almost getting the point across that we want it to be. Let's do a combination, right? We'll take those with the vertical, take this, bring it down. There you go, you get a little bit of something there. Not my favorite, but you know, we can gussy that up later with uh, with plants and stuff. So there you go, there's um, a general idea of the rocks, but we can keep going with this. Let's take our rocks and combine them with the painting tool over here. So we have the smooth and the rough. Let's see what fits in better with, uh, with our rocks here. Honestly, that rough is just about the same exact color and everything, isn't it? So that looks pretty dang good. But if we combine it with the the smooth, yeah, the smooth looks really good as well. So if we do the, like I said, just the edges of where the rocks are, I'm going to do a combination of the rough and the smooth. Get this kind of nice combination going on. Also over here, I kind of imagine a little bit of a beach where they could, uh, where they could come hang out at. Maybe even over here too. In this uh, this little inlet right here, we're gonna we're gonna fix that a little bit because it's not gonna work out quite how I want it to. We didn't give them a lot the uh, monitors that much room to kind of run around this area. So our little inlet idea is gonna get the axe, but that's okay. We're just we evolve the build as we go, right? Again, I never really have a full idea. Maybe some reference images and stuff, but never have a full idea of what I'm getting into. Uh, before I start building. So speaking of the guests and all that kind of fun stuff, and we'll get back to the beach and everything, let's go ahead and start to figure out where our guests are going to uh, enter into here and kind of look at the monitors. So let's get a pathway going in. We have this tree bark path already uh, going. I like how that looks, so let's keep it going. 
I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap here. So we're going to have the... We're going to have the uh, animal barrier. Excuse me. And then we're also going to need a guest barrier as well. That's something that I overlooked in the um, other, uh, the first build. Is that you also, you need the animal barrier, but you also need the guest barrier. You don't want the guests going up to the animal barrier and doing something uh, not very intelligent. <laughs> Humans have been known to not make the best choices when at zoos or other places. So we need to do everything we can to uh, to prevent our, our human animals from getting too close. So let's go ahead again, bring this all the way around. Didn't notice it before, but when I was building the kind of cliff faces right here, those are actually out of the habitat. So that might actually work out pretty well. Might need to edit that a little bit. We're just kind of getting a lot of ideas in place, right? You know, a lot of this stuff never sticks. That's why a lot of my builds, they take kind of a lot. <laughs> they can take a little bit of time uh, to do because I'll kind of get a few ideas in place and then realize, oh, you know what? That idea might actually work over this way. And that's, that's totally okay in my opinion is, you know, if something's, you notice it's working in one place but not working in the other, Switch it all up, you know, throw the habitat on its uh, head and everything. So same thing over here. You know, I, I do like the idea of the ridge line, uh, but let's not have it so close to the uh, get, uh, guest pathway. Very nice. So now we have a bit of an outline of where everything is going to go tell you i think it's about time that we need to get our um lizards or are they lizards are monitors considered lizards i keep wanting to call them lizards but i'm going to refer to them as monitors right now maybe they're totally different <laughs> uh but i do want to get them in there soon so i can see their navig uh their the area that they can navigate and everything uh because that is another thing is we're putting these rocks down hopefully they can walk on top of them and it does seem as though they'll be able to and, and the plants and everything as well uh but we won't fully know until they are uh fully in the habitat uh, doing what they do. So let's go ahead and we're going to put the guest barrier in place first. Because, um, so, yeah, we need to get the barriers in place. Then we can get our um, our monitors inside the habitat. So, yeah, I'm going to just kind of reuse this same fence that I did before. This was made using, let me show you here. This is made using the, I can't remember what these are called, but like the sticks. <laughs> Yeah, the white birch branches. I can't remember what pack this was from. I do believe this is from a DLC. It might be wrong. I hope I am, but search these. White birch branches used a few variation of those uh, for that uh, fence line and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna circle all the way around um, our entire habitat and everything. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll speed it up just a little bit here. Habitat all enclosed, at least from the humans. <laughs> uh, for the most part, we have this opening right here, and I did that on purpose because while I was in the middle of uh, doing up our um, fence line here, I had an idea of this little area here. So I want to take our fencing. We're actually going to delete it a little bit and call a mulligan. Um, what I want to do is I want to put up a glass area right here, a glass uh, fence areas. All right, so let's take this null habitat. We'll bring this right down here. We're going to get this glass as close as we can uh, to our habitat. So that might be a little bit too close. Tell you what, let's just start fresh with the glass going across. Then we'll um, redo our path around it. So we'll bring the glass out right about there. Looks pretty good. And we're going to raise it up just a little bit. What are we at? Two meters. Let's bring it up to three meters. Actually about two and a half, not too, too tall. There we go. Nice, and then we will get our null habitat all hooked up to it. There you go, and same thing over here. Uh, now we're not gonna leave it like that. <clears throat> definitely, definitely not. Um, and I actually changed my mind. Let's try and re, or uh, move this, have, get a little bit closer. 
Is it really gonna let me put it there? Whoa, what? Why does it let me put that there? <laughs> I'm not bad, it's just, that's impressive. All right, now maybe we can move this out this way. Nope, that's where it draws the line. All right, that is perfect. Great, so uh, yeah, again, we're not gonna leave that just like that. Um, let's bring our fence line just over this way. Actually, we're gonna leave that alone. We'll have something else fill that. Uh, but let's continue our rock wall over this way. We'll kind of make this a little bit of a like half cave, half uh, look-in area, um, and also have a little bit of a shaded area for our uh, water monitors as well. So um, again, always evolving our habitat. I do like that idea over there, but we're actually gonna get rid of these ridge, uh, rigid kind of rocks there. Get rid of basically all of them, that's okay. Uh, we else continue, uh, like I said, this uh, little cave type system over here. We'll try and use some of the existing rocks that we have because actually they might work pretty well, especially for the top area here. So we bring it down just a little bit. Doesn't have to match up perfectly, but you know what? Yeah, that is going to work pretty dang well. Uh, before we do that, let's go back to our rocks. There we go, back down to the Tropic set all the way at the bottom. And let's take these great uh, rock cladding pillar thin number two. Uh, we're actually gonna turn V back on, that align the surface back on, so that this aligns right up to where we want it to. I'm gonna hit X and X again, and we're gonna put that right on top. So we're, then we're gonna kind of frame in this, uh, this glass piece right here. So we'll frame this in first, and then we will uh, put the roof on it. And still using the same practices that we've been using of flipping things around, spinning them around, and never being repetitious with our uh, with our pieces. So we'll take all those, we'll even take this, flip it around. There we go. Take this guy here, go up, bring it back down just a little bit. Let's try and, there we go, much better. Bring it across, Whoop, we're off We're off a little bit, but that's all right. We'll take that, we'll spin it. Everyone, no one will know that that's the same rock used a bunch of different times, right? <laughs> there you go. And we'll go back with that same idea we were just doing. Let's put a roof on it. And I'm gonna go down here a lot. You're gonna check me out. Uh, you're gonna see me doing this a lot, where I'm just checking around where a guest would be, around the guest height, because it's always building for the guests, right? So we always want to check where or how, basically what the guests are seeing as we're building. So we don't want to build for up here. We're not building for the birds. We're building for the guests down there. So we want to always make sure that what the guests are seeing um, is the best view. So that looks pretty dang good right there. <laughs> All right, so we have a general roof there. Let's go ahead and take this and extend it out. Control X, yeah, spin it around. Level it out just a little bit. Don't want it to be too level or too purdy looking, but we're making a nice little cave system here. There we go, and then let's do that one more time. And again, same idea of spinning this around, maybe flipping it around. Bringing it back up this way, seeing how this looks at guest view. Got a little bit of a nub kind of shooting out here, so let's see if we can't fix that. Kind of spin this into the mountain side. Okay, that works. Kind of spin this in right there. Nice, yep, I like how that looks. Bring this out just a little bit. Out, and then spin in. Go up just a little. There we go. And if you want to get a better representation of what this is going to look like with guests, we can do two of the, one of two things. We can take some guests and just move them right there. Now we can see what that's going to look like for guest height. Or there's a great blueprint called the Angry Archer for Scale made by Mr. Domez, and who is roughly the same height as guests. So you can put them down as well. Then you get a really good representation of how things look. So that is a little bit too low for my liking. Let's raise that up a little bit. Same thing with this. Let's raise this up just a little bit. Here we go. Then we come back down here. Yep, that as well. Not digging how low that is. 
there you go. So now they get a nice view out there and we know it's in scale um, for our guests and everything. So uh, next thing, how are we gonna kind of ground this? Let's uh, take our same pieces. Maybe we'll actually take one of these pieces back here, one of these rocks. Maybe we can just kind of do one of these guys. Take this, flip it, flip it, hit M to move it, shift to bring it down. There you go, we have a little bit of a rock wall thing going on here, right? So we're gonna put that, yep, right in the middle of the pathway. I know a lot of people are a little bit of, I don't wanna say afraid, but just they, they don't think they can put things in the middle of the pathway. And yes, you very much so can, that is okay. Guests will either do one of two things. Either A, they'll clip right through it and just walk through, <laughs> or if you do what we're gonna do in a little, uh, just after this, they will avoid it. Uh, let's go back and clean this up. It's a little bit too thick. We'll actually make a few little pathway so they can walk through here. Yes, yeah, a little bit too thick on the other side there. Let's get rid of Frank real quick. There you go. Bye, Frank. Nice. Much better, right? So now, I could probably go out just a little bit like that. And then this path as well. We're gonna manipulate it a little bit. If it'll let us, it sure will. Because we're at five meters right now, let's shrink it down. We'll go down to four meters. And that'll fit in here pretty dang well. Oops, it's mad. Why is it so mad? We need to get rid of it. some more pathing. Everyone loves pathing. All right, now that we have our pathing uh, fixed back up. Yeah, I, I really broke that. That was good. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and like I was saying, we're gonna go into our facilities and we're gonna make guests not walk through this because that'd be great. Uh, let's go to, oh, what is it under? I'm not completely sure, but here they are right here. If you don't have to scroll down that far, they're uh, called guest barrier curbs. Uh, so we're gonna take these and we're just gonna kind of sink them right under the area that we don't want guests to walk through. So yeah, we don't want guests going through here. Let's put that right into the rock there and so that they don't see, we can sink this just underneath the pathway and they'll still avoid it. Uh, and then let's do the same thing around all the other rocks and areas that we don't want our guests to uh, walk through. So right through here, right there. I don't think it did it the first time. Well, it sure did. There we go. That should be good. I think that'll work out. Uh, let's actually unpause it real quick. Whoops. And let's see what these these fine folks do. Yep, they keep away from that area. Good stuff. All right. We'll go back over here. We're going to just finish off our uh, staff entrance area, doing a lot of the same stuff here. Just kind of putting a lot more rocks and covering up all the little holes and stuff like that. So lots of rocks for the foundation area, but then we're going to get into... Uh, my favorite part, which is some foliage work. And that's where it really, in my opinion, the build really starts to pop and really come alive is with the foliage work. Uh, a lot of this is just kind of laying down a foundation almost. And then when you get into the foliage work, that's where it really comes alive and uh, the build really just takes off. So um, there we go. Okay, good stuff. So uh, next up, Let's go ahead, actually we're gonna edit the barrier just a little bit more. Noticing that um, we are gonna have a lot of bells kind of going off, especially in this area over here. Let's delete all those. This as well, we'll start right here. Uh, lower this back down. And we'll get this right nice and close to the guest fence and then we'll put up the uh, water monitor fence. <laughs> And for the water monitor uh, fencing, what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm almost positive that they have an incredibly hard time, at least in game, walking on these faux aquatic rocks from the aquatic rock 
uh, Aquatic Pack DLC. Uh, so what I want to do is use these. I'm only going to put down a few real quick, and I want to kind of test this theory out first, because if not, then we'll need to go to another idea, which I have. Uh, but let's get these uh, pretty dang close in color, if we can. That's pretty spot on right away. All right, great. <laughs> uh, and yeah, let's put down a few of these and uh, see how that works out as far as them not being able to cross that threshold. Just a few, it's not gonna look great. This is just a testing ground. All right, great. Let's go ahead and get our water monitors and get them into the zoo. Okay, now that we have them in here, let's hit uh, H after we clicked on uh, our male prodom. Go to habitat, traversable area. Oh, I was mistaken. Okay, no big deal. Actually, I made it easier for them to get out, I believe. Uh, so yeah, let's go with option two, which is gonna go ahead and be get rid of these. And I know that last time I went ahead and took uh, one of these rock sets and kind of just flipped them up on their sides. And that was enough where the guests could see in still but the monitors could not traverse it essentially. And yeah, it didn't need to be up too, too far here. So let's do this for a test. So about that high. And yeah, it's basically about the same height as our uh, fence line, right? So that our guests and little guests can see inside. Okay, perfect. Yep, that's what it was. Um, so we're gonna take our two group object or two group rocks here, and kind of the same thing. Just kind of follow along the ridge line here of our uh, guest habitat to keep uh, the animals away from the uh, the fence line. Yep, and if we come back here, let's take a look at what we need to improve. Looks like over here, I was kind of thinking that too, that they did get a little bit lower. Our, the terrain height kind of changed over this way. That looks to take care of that. Um, good stuff. So they are totally encased here. Let's bring that up just a little bit more. There we go. But yeah, whenever I can, I really like to use natural uh, barriers rather than using uh, like the corrugated metal or I don't know, anything like that. I mean, that those have their place. They do fit in, don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, whenever I can, I do like to use the natural uh, kind of settings and everything, or a natural look and everything. So speaking of, I'm gonna get rid of our ridge line again. Uh, again, I really like that idea at the beginning of the episode, but it just didn't really work out, unfortunately. Uh, with the way that our habitat turned out here. All right, so let's bring this forward, make a little bit more of an encasing here. Perfect, all right, click uh, one more time. Just to check this out, oh, we did, unfortunately, open up a new area for them to get into. There we go. All right, and it looks like they're gonna have more than enough room. Let's just double check on their space and everything. Uh, yeah, they. so what, what was it? They had like 900 square feet um, at the start of it, something around there, and now it's down to 800 with the rocks, uh, 426 meters of swimming. They have a lot of deep water, um, perfect. So uh, while we're in this, let's go ahead and take care of their uh, the landscape needs for the soil and everything. Thinking about it now, it would have been cool to do an underwater viewing area uh, for this, but uh, that might be for another episode. That might be for another time when we come back and uh, if we want to improve this, we can maybe do it right through here. Depends what I do with the big hole area. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, you still get really great views of them. So uh, anyways, yeah, like I was saying, uh, they need some more soil. There's a little bit too, uh, too much, what, too much long grass. So we can go ahead and put some soil in over this way, especially in the more cavernous area, I do believe that's going to be. We go. We got greens across the board. Looking good. A little bit of sand over here. A little bit of sand right over there as well. Nice. Okay, good stuff. Um, let's go back over this way. I was talking about a waterfall. Let's finally do that. Uh, we'll go into what is it? Construction. Special effects. Turn off all of our blueprints. Go down to water. And yeah, we're just gonna make a small one. Nothing too terribly big or anything. And let's find the special effect waterfall murky bottom. That's not what we want. We want the, let's do the midsection. Uh, we only need the 
uh, five meter version. So this is the midsection murky. We'll unpause the game and get this about where we want it. Yeah, just right there. There you go. And we're actually going to sink this back a little bit further than I normally would. So it almost looks like it's trickling off of multiple uh, rocks and not just one, right? So let's actually move this over this way a little bit. Place one. We're actually going to place two of these. Bring it forward just a little bit. There we go. I like that. That looks pretty cool. There you go. And let's enhance our waterway a little bit to go along with this. Uh, we'll go to, I don't think it's, no, not Rapid Splash. Rapid's Foam. And we will spin this. We'll actually go to a line to water. There it is. Make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Oh, it would be really neat if there was... Um, or Babarusa had its offspring. Neato. It would be cool if there's a murky water version of this. I don't believe there is. No, there's definitely not. But we will make do. So yeah, just to show some uh, movement here. Put a few of these inside of our stream area leading to the lake and everything. There you go. Actually need to raise that up just a little bit. See, it's uh, it's underneath the water. Very good. That's much better. And same thing over here. Perfect. All right. So I think we are ready to go into foliage mode. So let's go ahead and uh, pause the game so that we don't run out of good light to use. And yeah, foliage mode is my favorite time. So <laughs> um, when you go into using foliage, don't try and limit yourself to just the area that you're building for. So what I mean is that we're very much so in a jungle uh, kind of area. But as you can see that we're not just using the strictly just the jungle uh, trees and foliage and everything. We have some eucalyptus, uh, rainbow eucalyptus here. We have the other uh, stringy wood eucalyptus trees. Um, kind of just like I said use a very uh, here we go have the uh, pingo tree uh, just use a variation of whatever you feel will fit into the area just use that like don't so much worry about especially in franchise mode like we're playing in franchise mode here uh, animals don't really care it seems about the plant coverage um it'll show that you know they're not happy about it but in the grand scheme of things it maybe brings down their uh, overall happiness meter really minimally to where they're still extremely happy so um that is what we're going to be thinking about as we're building this out um and to start let's do our lowland uh, kind of grasses and shrubs and stuff like that so we start low to high so we started with our rocks um, at the low here now let's we'll start um getting some of our uh, grasses and shrubs let's actually go into nature go to our plants tool uh, and we're going to go find my favorite which is the buffalo grass uh, if you're not using buffalo grass, you are doing it wrong, in my opinion. <laughs> so all of these areas that we just uh, painted over with the terrain brush, we're actually just going to pretty much fill in with all of the, um, with all of this buffalo grass. We're also going to turn on random rotation here, so that when we click, it automatically rotates it around, so we don't have to hit Z every single time. All right, so yep, that is the idea. I know it seems really like it takes a while, but uh, when you use the large one here, it really doesn't take too, too much time. And you don't have to fill in every, every single uh, square inch of area. We are gonna use a lot of other plants, but uh, honestly, the more that you use, the more area that you fill in with this, the just the better your builds, in my opinion, will look. So combination of this and the next grass that we're gonna use, which is the uh, Yorkshire grass. Yeah, those two uh, combined together you get some really really nice uh, habitats and again the big thing don't forget about the random rotation uh, button that is a huge part of making things look really really nice is rotating uh, them around and everything so let's do a few more here along the water line but as we get closer to our beach gonna kind of leave the beach area open not as many grasses along the beach right uh, so we'll do that. We'll actually get rid of one of these. I want to have another beach area over this way. Um, we'll continue on with our grass placing. There we go. Go back to terrain brush. Let's make another little beach head right here. Nice. Very good. Uh, next one, we're going to go back to nature tab, go down to the buffalo grass. Uh, we're going to use a different variation of the buffalo grass. We're going to take the, uh, I think it's the parched that I was using last time. Yeah, the parched. Let's use some of the dead grass in here. A little bit of dead 
in your plant and forest and foliage palette goes a long way. Uh, it is very rare that you see just completely f lush green grasses that are always manicured in like habitats and stuff. A lot of times you're going to see dead uh, plants and dead grasses and you know all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, definitely keep that in mind when you are building. Uh, just adds a little bit of color, a little bit of variation throughout there. Uh, next up, let's go to uh, my next favorite one here, which is the cabbage tree. Love to use this in different variations. They have this single one, which works out really, really well to just kind of here we go, just kind of sink into different rock faces and different places. So still have that random rotation on and varying the size of it with shift. But yeah, just kind of sinking this into. Just random little areas, usually a lot around corners. So put it along the edge of the guest area. You can block guest views, that's totally fine. Like they don't always have to see all the way around it. Let's take the other version of this, number two, it has a few more prawns on it. We're gonna lower this down. We're not gonna use this as the tree like this. Take that, lower it down, and then start placing. Another thing too is encroaching on the pathway. It's okay to have some plants encroach on the pathway here. You see that all the time, IRL. Let's go over here to the corners of our cave system as well. Place those right there. Same thing over here where it's looking very plain Jane. Just kind of place some uh, plants along there. There we go, looking good. Let's place some of these inside the habitat along the lakefront. These are kind of spiky, a little bit drier climate, but they still fit in well when you combine them with other plants and everything. So speaking of dead stuff, let's take some of our dead uh, birch trees and uh, different trees in here. Let's uh, kind of start sprinkling these throughout the habitat as well. We're actually going to lay these on its side. Which one looks good here? I actually like the this one here, the broken Himalaya. Let's lay a few of these on its side as if they've uh, fallen over. Now let's put a few of them together. Take those, let's take a bigger one here. Lean it over. Again, spin it, put a few of them together. Maybe flip it the other way too. Especially for like Zuzus, you see these a lot where the keepers or designers will put out purposeful log, uh, dead log areas. Let's put some stumps around as well. A few little things, just a few small things keep adding up to make a nice big area kind of thing. Um, all right, great. Let's keep shifting through, sifting through all of our uh, area here. There is another big plant I want to put in that I very purposely know I want to put in. That's another thing is uh, knowing your plants or knowing your items in game is going to help you out so, so much. Uh, like I know that I really like this underwater hydrilla plant. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to place this in a lot of areas because I love how um, kind of mossy and, I don't know, it just kind of fits in when you start to put this all around. So we'll incorporate that within the buffalo grass. Again, just kind of a mossy kind of look here. And speaking of mossy, why don't we jump back over to our rocks. We'll go up to those mossy rocks and uh, the dynamic ones. We'll add a few of those in as well. Those look really, really good com uh, combined to give that, again, uh, kind of hot, humid, sticky South America vibe with all the moss growing on things. There we go. Adds in a little bit of color too, right? And I haven't turned off that random rotate either. So we're constantly randomly rotating things kind of naturally. Let's use a different kind of rock here. There we go. Nice. Uh, then we'll actually jump out of the screen entirely because I already have a zoo full of the uh, palette that I want to use. So let's just go and steal from what I've already used here. We'll take some of these uh, silver ferns. Really like these silver ferns. They are fantastic to use. We'll start plopping those all around. Grouping them kind of close together. Again, kind of covering up a lot of the edge lines that we have where the rocks might not look the best just kind of by themselves. So you take these plants here and you start to cover up your uh, 
just these kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, not so great looking areas. Again, same thing on the pathway, right? We can put plants on the pathway. It's okay. It's okay. Guests might walk through it. It's okay. It's fine. We're going to make it through. <laughs> nice. So that's a smaller version. Let's take the bigger version of that. And if you notice, I'm rarely ever am I using the tippy to like just, you know, as a tree. So far, we're still in the bushes mode. But as we get out of this yet, we'll definitely be placing down some trees to get some shade going on in here. Because it is a hot, blistering habitat right now with no shade at all. Great. All right. I like how that's looking. Uh, there's another plant I want to get in here before we go to our trees, which is going to be, if I can find it real quick, I use it all the time. Except for right now, apparently. <laughs> oh, nuts. Where is it at? I can't remember the name of it offhand either. Oh, here it is. What is this called? Nope, not that. Not that. The one about not that. Not that. That. Not that. Not that. <laughs> that. The ponytail palm. Yes, the ponytail palm is fantastic. So it's a little bit like the original one that we we're using, the cabbage palm, but it has a little bit more lushness to it. So it just kind of adds in, uh, especially if you combine them together, it's a little bit darker green as well. So they, they go really, really well together. And again, going to reiterate, haven't turned off the random rotation button. That is a constant thing that is on when placing foliage for the most part in rocks. Here we go. There we go. What do we think? Starting to shape up a little bit, huh? So it's really about just adding, adding, adding. Just the more that stuff that you can add in for a lot of these habitats, the better it's going to be, especially if you're going for a natural look. The, the natural look is just all about adding, adding, adding. And we're going to check in with our habitat space because I bet you it went way down after doing this. Oopsie. Cool. All right. That looks great. Uh, let's go ahead and start to add in some uh, trees. So I've been using these Aki, Aki, Akai palms. These are fantastic to use. And here's a little trick that I like to use with these. So let's put these right on the edge here. So I have the random rotation on, right? So I'm going to click. I'm going to keep my mouse right about there. See how it rotated randomly? And I'm going to click again. So now we have two of those in the same one. And it makes it a lot more thick. It's just a thicker brush. Because if you leave it by itself, I mean, it's pretty good, right? But, you know, we put two of these together. And you're barely seeing through there. And that really blocks out the light. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to kind of block out the light in a lot of these builds. Especially with the theme uh, that we have going on with this so kind of South America uh, vibe going on. I really just picture really dense uh, jungle. So I'm really just doubling up all of the Akai palms here. Uh, let's put these a few more areas. Again, on the pathway, right? It's okay. We're going to put these right in inside the rocks too. Kind of growing out of the rocks. Again, going with that natural vibe. Let's see, maybe one inside the habitat too. Don't really want too many of these inside the habitat. It's more of a around the edge of the habitat thing here. Great, let's go ahead and we're gonna grab uh, this, the Nikau palm. And I've been doing this too. I've been sticking this right in the middle of the, of the palms here. So one, two, three, just as a little topper. It's just like a little topper to our uh, to our tree set there. We'll do one in the middle here too. There you go. Uh, next one up, let's uh, yeah, let's take the kapok kapok the kapok tree here. Love these. These cover such a huge area, uh, not only for vertical, but if you want to cover a big area on the ground as well for like foliage coverage, you can make a ginormous bush out of this. So always keep that in mind. Uh, but we're going to use this as an actual tree tree. Who would have thunk it? We put this right here. Look at this great coverage that we're about to get. Yeah, we're going to get great shade coverage right there. Uh, let's put one more here in the dense foliage areas where I'm looking. Let's do there. Maybe one more like here. Let's go back down to uh, guest view. See how this is looking, right? Always got to kind of keep up with that. Oh, it's looking really nice, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm really digging how those kapok trees and everything really brought that all together. And you can start to see where some of the areas that you need filler are. So like right here, we could use some filler, it looks like. This is pretty good opening right here, I think. You know, that might be a good opening over there as well because we still need some good openings for our guest views. Good stuff. This is a good opening for guest views here. I'm really satisfied with how this area looks over here. 
Let's have, uh, same thing right here. Really good view of the... We might even lower this down a little bit. The rock. Just a little bit. And again, this is why I stress to come down to guest view and check it out. Because look, we're starting to get these really cool views across the waterway. I just love how much more opened up this looks. This is a little bit hard to see for guests right now. Maybe we'll take out one of these. There you go. Then you get this cool view going over, looking over to the cave. Um, yeah, we're going to keep that right there. It's kind of just a walk around section. Not every single square inch needs to be a lookout area, right? Not every single area needs to be a lookout area. Yeah, this is a nice little view over here. So we definitely have more views on the other side, but I'm cool with that. I mean, if we take this, maybe delete this palm. Ah, that's not too bad. Or the fern, excuse me. That, that's actually really good. So now we have at least one, two, three-ish, four, five, six, cave seven. So at least seven good looking areas uh, for the guests. Um, great, yeah, let's keep going. Now we know where to kind of stay away from to, we don't need to build those areas up a whole lot. Um, cool. Let's try and find some more. Yeah, I like these, the strangler figs. Very cool to use. Just some more shade structure. Let's see if we can't attach this to our, yeah, let's do something like this where we attach it to our kapok tree a little bit, like it's growing off the side. It's, it's not the tuma. Where's the straight up and down one? There's another one of these that looks really great. But it's, uh, there we go. Number three. We will put that maybe just on the other side of the, yeah, just like right there. Good stuff. All right. You know, I'm feeling pretty good about this habitat. Um, I, I, there's a point where you kind of have to hit stop. Yes, we could keep going with a lot more stuff. But um, let's first go in and go to our habitat. Turn off the blueprints. And actually, we'll do it this way. We'll click on the Asian Water Monitor, go to its enrichment, filter habitat items by species. Um, oh, yeah, we're not quite done. We got to do the cave, fill in the rest of that. But let's put a sleeping area in the cave area here. There we go. Oops. Nice. And then, yeah, let's fill in some enrichments for our, uh, for our water monitors here. So definitely have to have the rubber duck. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts about that one. So there we have the rubber duck. Perfect. What else would look pretty cool here? I think the water jet rock would look pretty neat. Then we can recolor this as well. Let's turn this off so we can see what color we're working with. Yeah, that fits in so well with the uh, the coloring there. So we'll, we'll put that just on there. Let's make sure it's accessible. Unpause the game. Then we'll be able to tell. Okay, that is accessible. Very good. Let's build one more. One more just over this way. Looks like this was a good spot for one. Oops, let's actually just duplicate this because I want to do the coloring again. And we'll sink it down just a little bit. Very nice. All right, back to enrichment. How are we looking with their enrichment after those two things? Uh, so the toy is already good. We can still add some more because uh, that's always a good thing to have more and more but let's go to enrichment food and yeah we can definitely fit in an underwater fish feeder flat that can go there and let's do the bamboo feeder right in front of this area right here and that might be enough let's unpause it real quick yeah totally definitely enough and then one last check to make sure they can access that. They will be able to. And we'll pause it one more time so that our animals quit having bebes all over the place. <laughs> uh, let's change the water color as well. Kind of make it a, a bit more murky looking. Yeah, that's better. Much better. There we go. And we'll go back to this cave and just kind of extend it out just a little bit. Uh, I keep saying the word cave. I think I'm going to rephrase that just to be like a rock shelf. <laughs> like a shaded rock area, essentially. So there we go. And then I think, yeah, speaking of shade, one last thing that we'll do for our guests is... Uh, yeah, I like how that came, came out. Is There is a shaded structure I've been using around the zoo. Let's take that and we will uh, bring it right over this way if I can find it. 
Ah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, made this back in uh, episode one when I didn't really have many uh, building items to use, but ended up really liking it. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty good shading uh, structure. So let's put those in our main, uh, a lot of our main viewing areas. So maybe one there. And, yeah, like another one here. Maybe one that kind of connects up, like two of them, as you walk through here. That semi-connect up just like that. There you go. So what do we think? That looks pretty good, I think. I'm trying to think of any last minute items. I usually will think of something in the last minute and be like, oh yeah, this, that, and the other thing. But, uh, oh yeah, you know what? I did. <laughs> we need some areas for guests to sit and enjoy uh, watching the animals, right? So let's, I'm using the conservation bench around the zoo. Let's actually see if I have one of them sitting out. We'll stay with the consistency. Yep, there we go. Conservation bench, it's already colored. And we'll put those just right there. And some more uh, in the middle of the path a little bit, but kind of like that. One there and another one here. And we'll put a few here for now, even though I know this is all going to change later, but that's not a big deal. Uh, and then also to follow up with that, we'll do a bin area. I think I also have some conservation bins. Love the conservation bins. <laughs> Just all the conservation uh, seating and all that. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I put any bins out yet. Oh, my janitors are going to be... Oh, there they are. Let's see. I see my janitors are going to be really upset with me. He's not helping us at all. Uh, we'll put that one right in the middle of that. I kind of like how that looks. And another one, same thing, kind of in the middle of them there. And another one here. And then what else do we need? We also need to make some money. So why don't we go and find our donation bins. Never or always remember your uh, donation boxes here. They will help out so, so much. As well as education, right? We need to put some general education uh, in the area too. So we'll put one donation box there. Another one in the cave area. We're also going to put some education, I believe. One there. Let's put another one around this way. Looks pretty good. And maybe one there and one last one over here. Good. And then like I said, let's do some education. Help out our guests learn some things. I'm just using the general education board as of right now. Again, you know, if you have a more specific idea in mind, it's always fun to make some great education areas. So let's put that down right there. And we'll put another one down, like I said, over in the cave area. And to accompany it, we'll also use some speakers. There we go. And like I said, some speakers, sync that down. Turn this off so I can see what I'm doing. Speaker there and another one. Right there. Perfect. All right, let's turn these on to the water monitor and grab the speaker here. Kind of got to go underneath the ground. And same thing over there. All right. What else did I have? I had one other education feature that I really enjoyed. Yeah, it was just one of these education station soundboards. I uh, just kind of set this up in a random area. Let's put that not here because that's a viewing area. One of the non-viewing areas, right? Let's maybe put it like right there. And we'll take one of our overhangs here and put that over top of it. And guests really get a kick out of this. You hear this going off like all the time in the zoo. Like all the time. <laughs> Perfect. So there you go. I think that is pretty good uh, for our updated Asian water monitor habitat. Let's go ahead and get one last kind of peek at their habitat and everything. Yeah, so more than enough for everything. Look, this went down from 800 something to 450 after we put the plants in. Let's hit H to make sure that they can uh, still get around and everything. Yep, so they can still walk around. We took out this entire uh, corner over that way. I'm not too fussed about that. No big deal. Um, but yeah, they can still walk over top of the grass and um, all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, actually, looks like they can't get up onto this. Let's see if we can actually make that a thing. 
I would like them to be able to walk on top of uh, the rocks over here. So as we just kind of lower it just a little bit, I bet they'll be able to get on there. All right. Yep. So perfect. Yeah. Like I said, I think that um, goes ahead and does it for the uh, water monitor habitat. And um, looking at the time for how long this kind of took, I'm uh, going to scrap the second half of the uh, video idea. Um, yeah. We'll go ahead and address that right away in the first uh, part of the uh, next episode of Eco Trails. But yeah, I didn't realize how long I've uh, been recording for. So I'm going to have to go edit this and try and get this down to something uh, manageable <laughs> there. So, but hey, hopefully that you learned a little bit of something or um, I was able to yeah, teach you a little bit of my design technique and everything if you do have any more uh questions about anything if i did over uh, look something kind of go gloss over something a little bit do let me know down in the comments below um and yeah if you did enjoy this uh you know there, you can always do this more in the future i'm definitely not opposed to that um this was actually pretty fun kind of walking through the um thought process and everything so but yeah hey if this is just your first time hanging out with us don't forget hit that subscribe button there uh, check out some more eco trails franchise mode um here in planet zoo and everything and uh yeah no and also hit the like button does help out the video and everything a whole whole bunch there so yeah hey until the next one of eco trails y'all have a good one now thanks so much i'm like trying to find something for y'all to end on here let's end on the cave yeah there we go <laughs>